In this HVACR training video, we're going over the T1 through T10 thermostat wire functions. So I don't want you to get overwhelmed by all these terminals here. I'm gonna explain what all these do and on what thermostats these are active on. So to begin this, we gotta know that R is gonna be our power wire coming in from the HVAC system to the thermostat. And so this thermostat could be used for 24 volt systems or a 750 millivolt system, but in the case of a 24 volt system, you have your R wire, which is your 24 volt power coming from the HVAC system. And then you also have this little switch here. Now this switch separates the RC, which is for air conditioning, your R for your air conditioning and your R for your heat. And you can have them separated so there's no back feeding occurring. So you can have one for your heat and one for your air conditioning. Now, if you just have say a furnace and air conditioning system, then you can just have this flipped up and that's gonna have your RC and R connected completely. And so you typically are gonna have a red wire coming from your furnace or air handler over to your R and then a blue wire over to your C. Now C is the common and that allows the thermostat to act as a load and be powered even if you don't have any batteries. And so this thermostat, you can have batteries in the back just like that. You can put the batteries in to keep the programming in case you have a power outage or something like that. But if you have R and C connected from your air handler to here, you're able to power the thermostat without batteries. And so I, I highly recommend that you run an additional wire over to your C wire so that you got this hard powered. And so you're gonna also notice that you have these dark gray colors. Those are the only ones that you're gonna be using if you have a furnace and air conditioning system. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna go through all of these terminals, but you gotta think about this thermostat just acts as a switching device. That's its only job is to switch. And it's typically taking our 24 volt power wire and connecting it to certain terminals in order to tell the system to turn the fan on or turn the compressor on. And so up here you have your two S terminals and those are for an outdoor temperature sensor that connects all the way out at the outdoor unit and it's typically running on two black wires over to here to give the thermostat the outdoor temperature or on the more sophisticated thermostats in order to control uh, for during a dual fuel system during say heating mode. Now right here you have your Y terminal and that is for your compressor. So your R does not touch S and S. So this is specifically different than your Y terminal because when you turn your air conditioning on, R is gonna to touch your Y because what's gonna happen is it needs to send 24 volts out to the outdoor unit to turn on the contactor if you have a single stage system. Now you could have a two stage system and in this case Y2 is gonna be your second stage for your compressor. And so a lot of times we don't have a two stage compressor, you just have a single stage compressor. Y is typically gonna have your yellow wire right in here and then you can just use whatever color wire you'd like for your second stage of say air conditioning or second stage of heat pump mode but basically these are just to power the compressor. So next you have your G and that is for your fan. And so if you were to turn air conditioning on, you have R connecting to both G and to Y. And that's gonna be because G is your indoor fan and you need to supply 24 volts at the indoor unit to turn your, your fan on. And then you need 24 volts at your outdoor unit to suck in your contactor to turn your compressor on. And so you could just turn the fan on at your thermostat and it's just gonna singularly power the G so R and G are gonna to touch. It's gonna to send 24 volts back to the G terminal on the control board of the air handler and your fan's gonna turn on. R and C never touch. That would be a direct short because these are on the two sides of your transformer at your, your air handler. So you, you wouldn't want those to touch and they don't. So the only purpose to have a common here is just to power the thermostat. It's a path back for the, the power in order to power the load, which is your thermostat. Now these U terminals, those are for if you have a ventilation system. So the way that this is pushed up right now, uh, what's gonna happen is U, so R and U are gonna touch if you have your fan on. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna send 24 volt power over to say a fresh air damper. And then on the other side of the damper, you'd have that wire to the C terminal at your air handler or furnace. And it's just gonna open up the, the damper. If you have this sucked down like that, then this becomes just a dry set of contacts in order to, to 
let the ERV or the HRV, so that's a heat recovery ventilator or energy recovery ventilator, is letting it know when the fan is, is on at the thermostat. So those are, are not used that often, but that's what those are. Those are the U-terminals for fresh air. L or A, that is a signal wire in case there's a fault on the heat pump. And so that's not really used very often because you typically don't have a, a heat pump that has that function uh, in order to uh, have a fault indicator. Uh, so basically, we don't typically use that. You have your O and B, that is your reversing valve. Now, we're getting into heat pumps now instead of just, say, a furnace and air conditioning system. But on a heat pump, you have a reversing valve, and the reversing valve changes the directional flow of the refrigerant. So say we were going to uh, turn on air conditioning mode. So O is power during air conditioning mode, and so the factory default on these thermostats is that the O is, is on. So you need to change it to B if you have a reversing valve that powers during heating mode. But typically, most of the reversing valves on HVAC systems such as York and Bryant and Lennox, they all power the reversing valve during air conditioning mode. B would only be used if you have a rooter ream unit, and so you just need to change the function of these settings in the, in the thermostat itself so you can get right in there if you just press the mode button on your thermostat face, and, and you can change that right up. Anyway, if we're in default mode, which is you're going to have your O power during air conditioning mode. If we want to turn the air conditioning system on, R is going to touch G, R is going to touch Y, and R is going to touch the O for the reversing valve. And so the next thing that we will do is the AUX terminal. So AUX is your auxiliary heat. If you have a heat pump system, it will be your electric resistance heat. So say you have your your heat pump up at a high temperature, say it's five degrees higher or something like that than it, than it is in the building, not only is R going to power the Y and the G in order to turn the uh, system on in heat pump mode, remember that the O is not being powered right now, so the reversing valve is naturally in heating mode. So on a heat pump, that's going to allow your heat to turn on for the refrigeration cycle. But also, if you have that much of a temperature um, uh, you're seeking that high of a temperature inside the building, R is going to also turn on your electric strip heating inside at the air handler. So that's the purpose of the AUX, is if you have the temperature set up real high, it's going to turn on not only your heat pump outside, but also your indoor electric strip heating. Now, if you were going to turn on your electric resistance, so say you don't want to turn on your compressor for your heat your heat pump, what's going to happen is R is going to touch to E, and it's going to only turn on your electric resistance heat. So that's what that function is. That's all for heat pumps. Now we're going to get back to the a gas furnace. And so you have your R touching W. And that is for your, your heating mode. Now what you need to think about on a gas furnace is when you have your temperature set up higher than what it is in the building, R is going to touch W. It is not. R is not going to touch G because the indoor furnace control board is going to control when the fan is going to turn on. It's after the heat exchanger warms up. So it's simply just going to touch R to W. And so if you have a uh, standard gas furnace and air conditioning system, you're just going to use these five terminals right here. Now typically you're going to run six wires because you want to have a six wire just in case you have a problem and you can always switch one out. So you got R for your 24 volt power, white for your, for your heat, and then you have yellow for cooling or your compressor. Then you have G, that's green for your fan, and then you also have blue, and that's for C for your common in order to power your thermostat. Now, if you don't have at least five wires in your thermostat, you can use the K terminal along with another wiring module that's located at the indoor air handler or furnace. But what's going to happen is instead of for air conditioning needing two wires for your G, you know, one for your G and one for your Y, you can just put your Y wire right in the K, and you can use your green wire and put that over on the C in order to now have a common, because you're missing that fifth wire for your common. Now what's going to happen is during air conditioning mode, R is going to touch the K, and what that means is you're going to have a 24-volt signal going into the gas furnace, and then you're going to need a wiring module there. That wiring module is a THP 
9045 that's a Honeywell wiring module that has to be mounted at the indoor furnace or air handler and what that's going to do is that's going to stop any back feeding from occurring and then we get over to R and once again that is your 24 volt power for your heat if you have this switch up you have your your R for your heat and R for your air conditioning jumper together if you just want to have them separate you can just push this down and you could just have your air conditioning only or your heat only and that the only purpose is just that R touches the W, but RC does not touch the W. So it's kind of one of those things. It's when you have this together, these two functions are combined. Now, I also want to note that on the T1 and the T4 thermostats and anything basically below the T5s, then you don't have any access to use the U terminals, the S terminals, the uh, L slash A, the the O for the reversing valve, the second stage of heat, or the auxiliary, the emergency heat, and you can also, you're not going to uh, have any function for the Y2 or the K. So if you want to utilize those functions, you're going to have to get the appropriate thermostat, and you're just going to have to look up what that thermostat is able to handle. So it's very important to do the setup in your thermostat before you use it. It's also extremely important to, to make sure you're buying the right thermostat off the bat to make sure it can handle the amount of speeds that your system is and how many different heating and air conditioning systems you have that you want to control by this single thermostat. If you want to look at some thermostat wiring diagrams, we have 10 different wiring diagrams at our website over at acservicetech.com in the resource section. Also make sure to check out our book, The Refrigerant Charting and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. We have that available over on Amazon and also at our website at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at ACServiceTech channel.